Hello, hello, and welcome back. We, uh, we're starting day nine. Well, welcome back to tennis. I, I forgot to say the name of game. I don't even know where we are. What is building? Day nine, uh, April 18th, the Tuesday. Such a beautiful day. The sun is bright, the sky is blue, the weather is mild, the breeze outside ruffles the leaves of the, <clears throat> of the trees, covering the parks and, sh and streets in green and pink, carrying the scent of the greenery in the air. It is, without a doubt, a wonderful day. Nothing could possibly ruin it. No one could possibly be sad or upset or preoccupied on a day like this. This is, ju this is the, the recital, isn't it? Well, except for... <laughs> okay, June. June, seriously, sit down. I try repeating it for the uh, upteenth time, hoping that this time he'll actually register what I'm saying. Or that he won't disregard me, at least. I can't sit down. I can't keep myself sat down. I just can't. His voice is two keys higher than usual, and he's stuttering so much that I can barely make out what he's saying. His entire body is shivering. Is this ad adrenaline coursing through him, or is he just quaking in fear? Honestly, I have no idea. Come on, why are you so nervous? Didn't you say you performed live before? Don't you, you Didn't you used to take part in competitions? Y yeah, but it's been so long since the last time. How long exactly? About seven years. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm not sure. Great, he's not making sense. Come on, June. You have experience with this. You should be. You should have learned to uh, believe in yourself by now. Ha having experience uh, doesn't mean I can't screw up. I'm a single mistake uh, could stop me from getting to the next stage. Look, just. Just sit down for a minute and try to compose yourself, okay? I put my hands on both of his shoulders and force him down on one of the uh, benches they have in the lobby. Honestly, though, this place is massive. It's so full of people that even I feel a bit, a bit on edge. I can definitely understand why June would be bothered. Breathe, okay? Nice, long, deep breaths. I try showing him some breathing exercises, but he fails pathetically at uh, all of them. Ah, whoops, I did not mean to click that button. Don't look at those dates, no. <laughs> His breathing is so rapid and ragged that I'm afraid that he might be, he might give himself a heart attack. Actually, could he be um, behaving, could he be having a panic attack? Rapid, slow breathing, stuttering, pacing around nervously. It does sound like a description I've heard, but then again, I'm no doctor, so I can't really tell. I kneel down to uh, stay eye level with him, putting one hand on his shoulder and one on the other, one uh, other on his chest. I immediately start to feel awkward as memories of what happened yesterday flash in my mind. Still, I try to ignore them as best as I can. Right now, I need to help June. Right, all right. Uh, first things first, what was it that I uh, learned about panic attacks? I remember Shoichi telling me about, ta about telling me about. June, look at me, okay? Look at me in the eyes. Can you tell? Can you tell that uh, for me? Can you do that for me? June sets his eyes on my face. His eyes are bloodshot and scared, but he does as I say, nodding slowly. Good. Now focus on my hand. Uh, on your chest. Can you feel my hand on your chest? Uh, can you feel it moving when you breathe? June looks down at my hand, hand, hand uh, making me move it, <laughs> move it to his chin and raise his uh, head so he can uh, look at my face. No, you don't need to look at it. And just feel my hand on your chest. Okay. Now I want you to breathe for me. Okay. Just focus on moving my hand around when you, <laughs> when you do it. Four seconds in, two seconds out. Four seconds in, two seconds out. Can you do that for me? I'll, I'll try. And June starts to take uh, deep breaths. He struggles a, a bit at first, but his breathing starts to become more and more regular. He takes a, a couple minutes, but I can feel his body relaxing with my hand. I make sure to smile at him the whole time, reminding him that I'm here to help. 
I feel a bit awkward about this in such a public place, but my number one priority should be June. There you go. You're doing a lot better all right, already. Do you feel any better? A little. I don't feel like I'm uh, going to suffocate anymore. That's good. See? Uh, there's nothing for you to be afraid of. This is just a uh, day like any other. You're fine. He swallows hard. It makes me feel a bit better uh, to be to be able to uh, help him in a set uh, in some way. At least I don't have to stand around and feel helpless. Now, how about we talk about something more pleasant, huh? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Not really. Come on, there must be something. Uh, just say the first thing that comes to mind. Well, there's this book series I really like. The new book just came out last week, but I didn't have the money to buy it yet. Oh, that's cool. What's the series about? I just look at... I was just uh, looking to distract him for some pleasant conversation. But this is actually interesting. It's called the Murderous Queen Trilogy. It's a story set in a fantasy world about a former queen who escapes death after her husband is overthrown and killed in a rebellion, and then goes around looking for vengeance. That doesn't sound at all like something I'd expect you to read. Why? You think I can't enjoy a mature, complex story? Yes. You are wearing the... Your shirt tells me, yes, you can't. <laughs> what, what? No, no. Yes. Well, it's just that you tend to go for more, um, happier stories. I've, ev I've heard you talk about some games before, and they all seem very teen-friendly. This one sounds like something that's recommended to be 17 years old. Well, the rating is 17+, plus, and I'm 19. I don't see the issue here. True enough. A bit of a... a bit out of character, at least in my opinion. And the book that was just released was... what, the second one? June shakes his head in, neg in a negative. It's the last one. I read the first two, and they were really good. Although I'll admit, I was just 14 when the, when the first one came out, so I wasn't actually supposed to read it. My dad was just feeling a little very tired when he took me out to buy a birthday present, and didn't look at what book I picked. Sounds uh, like lousy parenting at its finest. Heh, <laughs> mom was really mad when she found the book. Poor dad got burned on it. As he should, letting a 14-year-old read something like that, but then again, I've played games that were like that when I was a kid, so I guess I'm one to talk. Well, it sounds like you like it a lot. Uh, what was the name of the third book? Just out of curiosity. I might just end up buying it for him later. What? What was it called again? Ah, The Red Keep. Ha, huh, that's an interesting name. I might end up picking up a copy for the... <clears throat> Uh, I might end up picking up a copy of these for myself. Well, what else? Tell me more about it. Uh, I'd rather not. You might want to read them in the future, and I don't want to spoil you. Ugh! Spoilers are my bread and butter. I don't care about spoilers. Come on, tell me more. That's what I tell people. Uh, anyway, that... <laughs> uh, that keeps you talking and stops uh, you from freaking out. Well, okay. But first... Uh, can you, uh, take your hand off my chest? There's some people looking, oh, people looking, and it's a bit embarrassing. Uh, I only notice it when he points it out, but I pull away immediately and get out, get onto my feet. I try looking slyly around to see <laughs> that there are a couple heads turning to an, in our direction. Damn, my cheeks feel hot right now. I guess June wasn't the only one that being distracted by our conversation. I'll just, uh, I'll just sit here. I take a seat next to June on the bench. All the awkwardness that I was feeling because of what happened yesterday has now become full force. Damn, it feels weird all of a sudden. No, power through it. I've gotten, gotten this before. I can't allow him to start, um, moping again. Well, anyway, uh, you were going to tell me more about these books. June smiles and it immediately sets my heart at ease. It's so good to see a smile back on his face. Well, the story starts with, um, Ella. Ella? Ella? 
Uh, that's the protagonist's name, by the way. Uh, Ella Richel. In a tavern, a man sits next to her and tells her she looks pretty and starts flirting with her. And she asks him uh, to buy her a drink. When he's not looking, she slips a bit of viper venom in his ale and excuses herself to go to the bathroom. And after she, uh, she uh, sees him drink it, then she escapes the tavern while he dies. Then we get taken to a flashback about how she was forced to go on exile. Well, after her husband was dethroned and murdered and her children were killed, she talks about uh, making a deal with a witch to grant her a new face that she can use to kill the others who mastermind the rebellion. Then she... As the minutes start to pass, I see that June's body has already started twitching entirely. Has stopped twitching entirely. Oh. I finally uh, begin to rest a, a bit... E a bit easy, knowing that he's calmed down immensely. He continues to talk about his book, enthusiastically describing the story to me, while still keeping himself very vague at and at certain points. I guess he really doesn't uh, want to spoil me after all. He starts to perk up considerably. His uh, gestures become more full of energy, and his smile become wider. After what I assume has been 15 minutes, he's almost uh, back to his usual self. Oh, which makes me sigh in relief. Hmm, are you alright, Yuichi-san? I'm not boring you, am I? No, no, nothing like that. I'm just relieved. Relieved? About what? He cocks his head to the side, like a curious little puppy. It's adorable to see him behaving like this again. I decide that he's, uh, there's no harm in telling him. Well, look at how much you've calmed down. You're acting like yourself again. June blinks a couple of times. His eyes becoming wider. <laughs> You're right, I do feel better. See? I I'm glad I managed to calm you down. Ugh. He suddenly wraps a massive orange fur. Uh, when June pounces on me and out of nowhere, enveloping me in a warm, tight hug. Thank you so much, I didn't realize it, but you were worried about me all this time. While the feeling is certainly nice, uh, the first thing I would... I worry about is the people around us seeing. Well, this. I give him a few taps on the arm. Okay, okay, easy there, tiger. We're still in public, remember? Uh, all right. His tail immediately uh, stands upright as he uh, pulls back from me, scratching the redness, the reddened cheeks in embarrassment. Sorry, I just kind of lost control. It's all right. I don't mind. It's a nice feeling, uh, just not when we're in public. Okay. Okay. Oh man, he's just too precious. Please, June, never change. June Kobayashi? A voice calls June's name. We both turn our heads in search of it at the same time. Uh, we both see a lion dressed in a red t-shirt and a pair of cargo pants. The lion stares at June with wide eyes, his mouth open to an O shape. Oh my god! I didn't believe it when I saw your name on the list of uh, participants, but it is you! I'm sorry, but who are you? Oh right, it's been seven years. No wonder you wouldn't recognize me. I grew a lot taller, and I didn't have this mane back then. Wait, uh, Akutagawa-san? Akutagawa the coon? The lion smiles, putting a hand on his waist, <laughs> uh, making the bracelets he has on his... Uh, Rest, uh, clink. You haven't changed much, <laughs> all things considered. Well, you grew a little bit, in different directions, still. Uh, still, I uh, heard you gave up the piano after the incident seven years ago. What brought you back? Uh, noticing the change in June's demeanor, the lion awkwardly scratches the back of his neck. Sorry, I let curiosity get the better of me. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. Still, it's good to see you again. Maybe I'll finally have my revenge. Uh, I'm sorry to intrude in your conversation, but what's going on? What's this talk about vengeance? My sudden interjection make June, makes June jump from his seat. He apparently uh, completely forgot that I was here. Oh, that's right. Yuichi-san, this is uh, Shinji Akutagawa. Uh, he used to be a friend of mine back when I still participated in competitions. Oh, please. Let's just uh, call it what it is. 
No need to play friends with me. You and I were bitter rivals. We were? He falters, uh, gasping and gaping in shock. Hey, are you kidding me? Of course we were rivals. I always had to share the podium with you. You have, a, uh, You have no idea how bitter I was. Wait, we shared the podium? I didn't remember that. June scratches his cheeks as the lion looks at him, completely flabbergasted. Are you seriously, uh, telling me you forgot about me? Well, I didn't forget. I remember talking to you before and after the competitions, but I don't really remember how you played or where you placed. I wasn't really paying attention. Huh. You self-absorbed prick. I spent all this time thinking about you, and you didn't even remember me. Big comical tears start welling up around around his eyes as he begins to pout. Oh, so sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Well, forget it. You and I will square off on the stage, and I will destroy you. Just make sure that uh, that weak set list of yours doesn't spell your doom. I'll make sure the name uh, Shinji uh, Akitagawa is the one you'll never forget. He runs off without a second glance, leaving us to eat dust. Well, that was a bit... Weird. And June nods in affir uh, affirm affirmative, still looking confused. By the way, Uchi-san, when are the others getting here? It's already... 9.35? Well, Kekun and Saya uh, said they'd arrive at around 9.40. So they've, um, they'll have they be getting here soon. Shuichi will probably still take uh, at least an hour since he's dealing with some issues at school. Issues? Yeah, I uh, kind of forgot to get excused to come here today. Shuichi's at school right now trying to get things um, straight so I don't get punished for skipping. Wait, don't you need permission for that? How is he going to let you, like, uh, going to get you excused? Well, he'll work his magic. He's a school council president. I'm sure he'll manage. I, I see. Wait. Why is he the one getting you excused? Well, it was his choice to go in my place. Why would he do that? Well, he was a bit worried that I'd, uh... June just stares at me inqui with inquisitive eyes. Yes? He was a bit worried that I'd say something I shouldn't and end up getting in trouble. So, he basically said you were too incompetent to do it. This is not what he said. But it's what he meant. When did you get so snarky? I learned from watching you guys talking to each other. Isn't this what you do? Oh boy, I suddenly feel like a bad influence. And don't worry, I'll, I'm just pulling your leg. It was funny seeing that look on your face. We've created a monster. Anyway, can you try calling Shoichi-san and ask him if he's going to uh, take long? I kind of need him to be here soon. Why, your performance isn't until 12.30. W well, yeah, but all the performers need to go backstage to prepare half an hour before the first performance starts. And then we just stay there to concentrate on our performance. Wait, this isn't uh, the first perform- Wait, isn't the first performance in an hour? Yeah? What? Why didn't you say this sooner? Well, you didn't ask. So if I don't uh, ask you something, you won't tell me? Crap, I have to call Shoichi and tell him to hurry. Sorry. Later. I walk away from June, going to the entrance of the concert hall, where the phone signal is a, where it is a bit better. Two bars. That should be plenty. Now to see if I can actually call him. Yuichi? Get here now! Jeez, are you trying to make me deaf or something? What's going on? Is everything okay? Are you still at school? I just left. I'm heading to the straight tra train station now. Why? Run for it. You must be on the get the first train that comes by. What? The next train is in five minutes. There is no way I can catch it. What's this even about? June has to go backstage in half an hour. If you don't hurry, you won't be able to see him until after his performance. Shoichi? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? 
I have to pull away the phone from my face as I'm at risk of going deaf. Jeez, this isn't my fault. Why am I the one getting yelled at? Didn't you just complain ab about me doing just that? I don't care. Why wouldn't- why wasn't I informed sooner? Because I didn't know myself. Juno only told me about it now. I hear a groaning on the other side, followed by the sound of running steps. Forget it. I'm gonna try to make it to the station in time for the next train. Don't let him go anywhere until I get there. I'll try, but I don't know if I can- Don't let him go anywhere until I get there. Just like that, uh, he shuts the call off and I'm left with ringing in my ears. Well, I guess that takes care of that. Oh. He, like, changed clothes, like, right in front of me. In front of a whole crowd of people. Kegun's impressive. Now, to go back to... Boo. Ugh. I nearly fall on my ass when Keisuke suddenly jumps in front of me, scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> gotcha. What the hell? Sorry, I saw you on your phone and I couldn't resist. When did you even get here? Oh, about 30 minutes ago. I came in with Saya, but Sheila left to look for Kobayashi. And, like I said, I couldn't resist, so I stayed behind. Keisuke chuckles, puffing his chest out with satisfaction. I sigh. That's... that's just great for you. Can we get back to uh, June and apparently Saya? Whoa, someone's in a bad mood. Yeah, I didn't have a very good day. What happened? Well, it was crazy, really. You wouldn't believe if I told you. Told you. Kekun scratches his chin, obviously curious. Try me. Okay, then. When I came to the concert hall today to meet up with June, then something happened and I had to step over, step away for a second. Yeah? KSK, um, always... Uh, Keisuke's always been a sucker for dramatic stories, so I make sure to make a dramatic pause. He gobbles it up like a rabbit with a carrot or a hare. Eh, doesn't matter. Then, all of a sudden, this crazy lunatic hare jumps out of nowhere and screams at my face. His face immediately deflates. I see the twinkle of humor and curiosity in his eyes die away. Har, very funny. You think so, too? Great! I th I myself thought it was hysterical. You really are an idiot. Well, considering that, consider that payback for nearly giving me a heart attack. Fine, fine, I get it. Let's just go join the others already. Without waiting for a response, Keikun walks away from me. Hey, don't just leave me hanging. Jeez, did Keikun run towards them? How did he get there uh, so much quicker than I did? The first thing I notice uh, when I reach them is that Saya, f <clears throat> Saya seems to be talking very excitedly. Wait, what's with that look on the on those two's face? The ball went, <laughs> yeah, and then I hit it with the racket like zoom. <laughs> then it hit the ground and made a huge po. Is, is that that an actual conversation? I'm not sure if that's uh, even Japanese. Hey, Yuichi-san, Yuichi-kun. Saya quickly hops ha, ha, uh, towards me, waving. Uh, hey, Saya. Good morning. She jabs me in the torso with her, with her standout hand, uh, hitting me right between the ribs. I have to hold on to Keisuke's shoulder to keep myself from falling down. She completely knocked the wind out of me with that. I, I can't breathe. Hmm? Saya stands in her spot, looking innocent. Are you alright, Yuichi? You don't look so good. Of course I don't look good. You just knocked the air out of me. What? I didn't hit you that hard. That was just a friendly poke. No, Mizuguchi-san, that was a bit... Uh, remind me never to walk within arm's reach of you. Oh, come on. I was just wishing him a good morning. She stares guilty at me as I gasp for air. If you do that to someone when you're trying to be nice to them, I'm afraid of what you do when you're angry. I've heard some stories. Oh, really? Do tell. Well, there's the time that I... Hey, quit it. Y yes, ma'am. 
Oh boy, I wasn't ready to get stabbed in the gut first thing in the morning. I already said I was sorry for that. Actually, you didn't. She gives me a frightening, murderous glare. Kobayashi-kun, she said she already apologized for it. What? Surprisingly, uh, <laughs> you're trying to deflect the blame to someone else now. Great. The day has barely started and you're already terrorizing the community. <laughs> well, I feel like I, I can finally stand on my own two feet again. Man, I thought I was going to puke my guts out for that one. Sorry. At least now she's apologizing. What are you two um, talking about anyway? Oh, I watched a video of a challenge, a challenger level tournament yesterday. It was amazing. You mean the one that happened in Miami? You saw it too? A little. I, so I watched about 15 minutes of it before it made me want to go outside and practice. Must be a, uh, must be nice being able to watch the things on like on like TV. Concerts and orchestras don't get nearly as much attention as sports do. Not many people like classical music to begin with, and it sucks. Well, and that sucks. Like, cause I I like, I, I like that kind of shit. I don't know. It's probably why I was in concert band for like nearly a decade, and then didn't keep up with it after graduation. Ah, ka, 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 ka. Uh, so it, uh, it'd be a tough sell, but there are still some channels dedicated to that sort of, that sort of content. And they're usually premium channels that you have to pay top dollar to watch. That's true. You won't have to worry about that sort of thing for long. You will be going to a music academy next year. You'll see tons of concerts and orchestras. Aw, oh, damn it, Saya. Do you have any idea how long it took me to calm him down? Now you have to go and remind him of it. It's not that easy. Unless I graduate from a very prestigious academy, finding a job as a composer would be hard. And those are really expensive. I need a scholarship to be able to attend, and I need an impeccable record to get one. I basically have to join every piano competition possible, and have to win them all just to have a chance. That sounds rough. That's what I get for being out of stage for seven years. Oh yeah, this reminds me. June apparently has a rival. What was his name again? Uh, uh, Teruyama? Akiyama? What was that lion called? Uh, Akutagawa-kun. Ah, yes, that's his name. Boy, I was way off the mark on that one. Yeah, it's the big lion guy. He said he was June's biggest rival back when they still performed in competition. Apparently, June beat him every single time. You should have seen it. He came he came here a swearing vengeance and all that. Well, sounds a bit cliche. June runs, uh, lets out a nervous laugh. <laughs> yeah, Akutagawa-kun was always pretty intense. He was a penchant uh, for, uh, for being dramatic, uh, <clears throat> even when we were kids. I guess that hasn't changed even now. Well, this could be fun. This means we could actually get to watch some competition. Oh, I know. I have a list of, of participants with me. We could check out uh, when he's uh, performing. Oh, that's a great idea. I haven't checked it yet. Kikun pulls a flyer from his pocket and folds it. In the pictures, um, in it uh, are the pictures of many kids with some details written next to them. It seems these are all their set lists. Each player is allowed 15 minutes to perform, and they can perform as many songs as they want in that time. Let me see. Uh, Kobayashi-kun, you're going with uh, the, these these things. Yes, yes, let's... Um, uh, not quite hitting the 15-minute mark. Oh, yeah, I was afraid stamina might be an issue, so I chose to uh, keep my list a little bit short on the short side. I'm actually surprised you knew these songs. Really? Son of a rich house, I was force-fed this kind of music since I was seven. My grandma tried to force me into playing the violin. Doesn't sound like it was very fun. It wasn't, but I survived. Anyway, let's see. Uh, Akutagawa. Akutagawa. Ah, there he is. 
Kekuna nearly uh, buries his face in the paper. Huh? His voice is so loud that it uh, leaves my ears ringing. Jesus, give us, a, give us a warning before you do that. Is there something wrong? Well, he's performing... Franz... Yeah. I, I stare at him in confusion. Is that name supposed to mean something to you? When I look to the side, I see June's face has nearly gone lost all color. June, are you... What song? His voice comes out crackly and incredibly small. Yeah, that, that, that's, yep. The who and the what now? And June swallows audibly. I am sure his face has gone at least three tones whiter. His voice comes out almost in a monotone. Uh, Franz Liszt is a world-renowned composer. His works are said to be some of the most technically difficult in existence. That song, A Grand Fantasia, is considered one of the most difficult pieces. Not many pianists attempt to play it because of how difficult and uh, demanding it is. That song isn't. <clears throat> that song is exactly 14 minutes and 59 seconds long. Even for an easy piece, stamina would be a concern. For that song, though, if he plays it mildly well, he's uh, going to almost uh, certainly win the competition. If he plays it well enough, he could even get world recognize recognition. That's how difficult that piece is. Wait, uh, the way you're saying it sounds like he's already got this in the bag. Do you think he can pull it off? Yeah, I mean, uh, didn't you say that even professionals tend to stay away from that song? What makes you think a high schooler can play it? Why would it? Why would he submit it as a uh, <clears throat> set list if he can't play it? Kekun, you're not helping. Well, sorry, uh, I'm just trying to be realistic. I. Seven years ago, I didn't even think he, he could have. If he was good enough to to do this song, then I remembered it. But I need to talk to the organizers. I cut June off before he walks away, putting myself in his path. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't tell me you're going to be dropping out because of this. I notice June um, clutching his fist so hard that I'm afraid his claws are going to uh, puncture his palm. I'm going to increase the difficulty of my own set list. Well, calm down for a second there. Didn't you just say a second ago that you chose your songs because stamina was a concern? If you increase the difficulty even further, then... I have to fight fire with fire. Now I understand the comment he made by my set list. It wasn't bold enough. He's gonna completely bury me unless I take and take a risk. What are you even going to perform? You haven't practiced any other songs. There are two others I know. I know by heart. I used to perform them a lot when I was younger. Which ones? Beethoven's uh, Moonlight Sonata, Third Movement, and. Wait, I remember that name. Isn't the song that you were playing when we met? He nods. It was the song I played the most. It was almost always in my set list for all the competitions I took part in. I still remember walking into the music room that day. The other one is, well, Winter Wind. They might not be as difficult as the song uh, Katagawa Kun chose, but they're both very technical. If I play the two of them together, I might have a chance of winning. They're also incredibly fast-paced and demanding. Are you sure you can even, um, handle playing the two together? You'd be mashing the keys almost non-stop for ten minutes. If Atagawa-kun is willing to take this much risk with his song, his song selection, then I have to be doing the same. The difference is that he had time to practice his song. You didn't. You were too busy practicing your old set list. Jun presses his lips, shoving his hands uh, down in his pocket before looking down at the floor. I know that, but I have to try. Like I said, I know the two songs by heart. I perform them so many times, I can play them in my sleep. Can you play them as well as you need to? This guy's, per this guy's performance is even remotely decent. Then yours is going to be absolutely perfect to be able to win. I know that. He raises his voice, making uh, June and I uh, jump at the step. Case stares at him, bewildered. 
I even notice a few heads turn our way. June, realizing this, his attention coming our way, crosses his arms, looking back down at the floor. I know that. But if I don't do it, then I'm going to... I'm going to guarantee a loss. You said it yourself. Even with those two songs, I need to be absolutely perfect to stand a chance. What chance do I have of my current list? Kikun crosses his arms, rubbing his right elbow with his hand as he looks away, biting his lip. None. Exactly. The two just stand awkwardly, rooting to the spot, not looking at each other. The atmosphere has suddenly become so weird and awkward that it's hard for me to say anything. Well, if that's how it is, then you should just get it on with it already. That's when Saya speaks up, drawing everyone's attention to herself. She stands there, smiling, looking either completely oblivious as to the um, weird mood surrounding all of us, or just simply not caring about it. I'm not even sure if you're... Uh, going to if they're going to allow me the set lists are decided weeks in advance Well, you won't know unless you're willing to try and nothing's gonna happen if you don't try You're right. I'm gonna be right back June walks away looking for the uh, competition organizers Now that I think about it one of us should probably go with him, huh? I exchange glances with Saya who apparently um, picks right up on what I was thinking I'll go after Kobayashi-kun. Uh, make sure he doesn't get lost. Kikun nods in agreement. Probably for the best. Let's not forget, he still gets lost at school. I wouldn't put it past him of getting lost here. Alright, I'm gonna go catch up with uh, you guys later. Kobayashi-kun, wait up! With that, Kikun and I are left alone in the middle of the busy lobby. Well, I guess that's that. Hopefully he doesn't end up in that much trouble. Yeah, I'm still surprised you know classical music, though. What, really? You too? Come on, rich kid from a traditional family. You really doubted for even a second that I wouldn't be exposed to classical music? You said your grandmother forced you to practice the violin. Does that mean you play? A little. I was forced to practice for three years, but I purposely did badly whenever she came to watch just to spite her. Eventually, she just gave up saying I was horrid at it. I was never forced to touch an instrument again. Ha, huh. if only she knew it was all just fake. I was actually kind of decent at it. I just hated the damn thing. Dad got the raw end of the deal, though. From what he tells me, she was um, more or less relentless when he was a kid. She forced him to pick up the piano because she wanted the <clears throat> prestige of having her son be a pianist. Then he uh, fell in love with the piano and decided to become a professional pianist. She, of course, was all too happy to oblige, since he was the uh, second child and was never going to inherit the business anyway. <clears throat> then right when he landed his dream offer to play for a um, prestigious orchestra in France, his brother died and she forced him to take up the business. Wait, so she... She forced him to play the instrument when he didn't want to. Then, when he decided that he actually liked it and wanted to make it his life about it, she took it away from him and forced him to become a businessman. Only one of the many reasons I hated my grandmother. That's really awful. I'm surprised you even told this to me. You never said much about your home life. No one ever asked, and I never really had any reason to say it. This time is just kind of it just kind of came up <clears throat> as an interesting tad bit tidbit of the conversation we were already having. So you won't volunteer any information about yourself unless someone asks you? Nope. I'm not that interesting a person uh, to just start talking about myself for no reason. Unless it's something that can be relevant to the conversation, that is. So, you're saying if I ask you some, quest uh, some questions about you, you'd answer? Maybe later. Why later? So you are avoiding this after all? No. It's just that I see Urata coming our way, and it looks like he might uh, drop any second. What? <sighs> Junkun, where? He went over to the or the organizer's office. What? I told you to keep him from uh, leaving until I got here. Shin grabbed my shoulders. Oh, Shoichi grabbed my shoulders, um, burying his fangs into me. Burying me. <laughs> as much as I love getting blamed for everything. I pull both of his hands away from my arms. 
He hasn't gone backstage. He just went to have a word with the organizers about the competition to see if he could change a set list. Oh. He stares at me awkwardly, uh, slicking back to a uh, less threatening position and scratching the back of his neck. I cross my arms and shift all my weight to my left leg, uh, giving me a, a smug look. Shuichi looks down at the floor, embarrassed. Sorry. I laugh, having some innocent fun at his expense. By the way, by the way, uh, why are you so sweaty? You smell like you ran a marathon. Keisuke pinches his nose mid-sentence, making his voice come out all nasally and funny. That's because I did. I had to run from our school to the station in under five minutes if I wanted to catch the closest train. Then I had to run from the station all the way here. I gave him a thumbs up. Good job. I can barely even stand. Don't praise me as if I were a child who finally learned to clear our table. All right. Who's a good boy? Who's a... <laughs> what am I, a dog? Shuichi grabs my shoulders again, giving me a firm shake. Well, technically. Shut up! Keikun's lips quiver in a half-smile, full of smugness and satisfaction. Well, what else did you expect me to say? I didn't know I had to uh, praise you every time you did something nice. Like you said, you're not a ch you're not a kid or a dog. Well, technic. Shut up! Keiku chuckles, seemingly um, very happy with himself. You don't have to praise me. It's just, it feels nice when you do. Okay. That's kind of gay. All right, all right, I get it. I reach upwards to uh, <laughs> to put my hand on his head, uh, petting um, <laughs> affably a few a few times, even uh, scratching in the back of his ear a little bit. You did good, show. Uh, June is going to be very happy that you made it. Uh, I. He blushes furiously, looking down at his feet instead of at me. Th thank you. Hey, you did great, man. It was really nice that you went through all of that trouble for June. Well, it wasn't that much trouble. From the corner of my eye, I can see um, Keisuke stifling a laugh. Heh, <laughs> he never seen uh, Shoichi being bashful before. I'll admit, it's quite a 180 from his usual attitude. A devilish, uh idea shines in my mind, and I don't hesitate to try. Yeah, you did good. You did very good. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> uh, he brushes for, uh, blushes further, um, mattering, muttering out of a, <clears throat> his words almost incoherently. I, uh... Hey, wait a second! He steps away from me, looking super pissed. <laughs> what did you almost make me say? <laughs> Unable to hold it any uh, longer, Keisuke bursts into laughter, making Shoichi finally remember that he was actually there. I have no idea what it was I just saw, but I'm glad I have. To, uh, I'm glad I have to. I have seen it. What? Shoichi blushes, uh, something furious. Fierce. Even the tip of his ears go red, as they um both uh, flop downwards on his face. You will pretend you never saw this. Ha, huh, we both know that's going to be impossible. You suck. I'm aware of that. What else is new? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you already uh, had your fun, Keikun. Lay off of him. Ah, uh, I was just getting started. Well, just stop, okay? Alright, alright. I won't tease him about it anymore. Th thank you. Uh, Shoichi, uh, Shoichi's breath breathes a sigh of relief, and his entire body relaxes. Alright, alright. Uh, enough with the tease, uh, the tease Shoichi game. Let's play the please go patch yourself dry in the bathroom game instead. I've heard it's very fun. And while you're at it, please, um, use some deodorant. The strong smell of a sweaty dog is offensive to my nose. What? Now you're just going out of your way to insult me. Keikun pinches his nose again and starts breathing through his mouth. I'm not doing... <clears throat> I'm doing no such thing. My nose is just really sensitive, and the smell is starting to make me nauseous. What, Yuichi, you don't mind it, right?
I mean, I, I would kind of mind it in a public space. Well, Shoichi, uh, let me remind you, remember the word that a wise man once said. What was it again? Oh, that's right. Dude, you freaking sneak, stink. Don't you ever shower? Sheesh, that bad. You smell like wet dog, and believe me, I know what wet dog smells like. Shuichi laughs, covering up his mouth in an attempt to stifle it. You two might as well, uh, might be, uh, used to it by now, but I'm not a dog, nor do I live with a dog. I'm not used to this. Nah, this smell is a bit stronger, even for me. Shuichi, you should definitely go clean yourself up. Plus, you don't have, you don't want to offend the others uh, who are trying to uh, sit next to us, right? You're right. The last thing I want to do is bother other people. But... He gives me a meaningful, pitiful look. You're gonna have to get over that. Go over uh, that at some point. I know, still. Huh? Kikun curves his body, leaning towards us. He shifts, um... He lifts a, a hand and waves. Hello? Person who has no idea what you two are talking about here? Oh, right, well... How can I say this? I, uh... He looks away, pretending to uh, think about something. In reality, he's just hoping that Keikun will forget about it and change the subject. I sigh. Shuichi's afraid of public bathrooms. What? You are such a tattletale! What? Why? Why are you afraid of public bathrooms? I'm not afraid of them. Not, not exactly. I just think they're really, really gross, and I'd rather not go inside one. I feel like I could, could catch an STD just by us breathing the air inside them. What? This building is national properly. property. The whole place is spotless. You could eat off the bathroom counter. Ew, no. Don't say that even as a joke. I think I could feel my stomach crawling up and curling itself into a ball. You're weird. I guess this explains why I never saw you going to the bathroom whenever we go out. But wait, what about school? Doesn't that count as a public bathroom? Are you kidding? I spend more time at school than I do at my own home. That place is already a second home to me. What? But that doesn't make any sense. Shuichi scratches his neck, looking away. In, assess in essence, Shuichi is basically just weird. How cool of you to say this to my face! Oh, please. I didn't say anything that you yourself hasn't said before. What? Oh. Ah, oh, screw it. You're right. Kekun and I uh, laugh at his re reaction, making him shoot us a death glare. So I don't like dirty places. So what? Everyone's got something they don't like. Yeah, but people don't usually have fears that keep them from doing basic, something as basic as going to the bathroom. I told you, I'm not afraid of going to the bathroom. I just... Just... I'd just rather stay away from it, because I don't feel... Because it makes me feel uneasy and uncomfortable, okay? Dude, that's a textbook definition of fear. Kisuke laughs, making sure we should shoot him a look... <laughs> another... Yet another death glare. Bite me. Are you sure? Hares have pretty strong teeth. He opens his mouth a little, pointing to his teeth. Well... I didn't mean literally. Too late. Keisuke uh, lunges at Shoichi with his mouth open, going for the neck. Are you a hare or a vampire? Shoichi reacts fast, pushing him away. What? No! Keikun falls back, laughing. I'm sorry, your reaction was just too funny. I couldn't resist. You do realize we're in public, right? Uh, so we're horsing around a little. Big deal. You have the weirdest sense of humor, and of timing. It's the, uh... It's the pot calling the kettle. Okay, you two. Behave, I don't want to be seen with two guys acting like complete lunatics in a public place. Why do you even care? It's not like you're going to meet these people again. You're an athlete. You're a completely different circle. People who go to tennis games usually don't attend classical music competitions, so it's not like any of them know you. Oh, really? Because you, me, Shoichi, and Saya all go to tennis, tennis games, and yet we're here? Well, yeah. That's just because we know Jun, and he's competing. Yes, and it's possible for those uh, circumstances to exist for us, doesn't it? Also stands to reason that it could be true for everyone else. Besides, 
for yourself, you yourself admit that you like classical music. I suppose you're right. I guess I went a little overboard. Yeah, besides, if Yuichi is the one lecturing you about this sort of thing, then you should take the uh, take that as a clear sign that you need to uh, rein it in a little. Hey! That's true. Hey, I'm not that bad. You're the one who, um, keeps, who keep arguing in public and end up getting people complaining about you. Remember the time at the in the diner a while back? I give them a smug smile. <clears throat> uh, I think I'll end the part here, so I'll, I'll see you around, everyone.